Good morning, good morning. It's uh, 249, 250 a.m. Tuesday, June 9th, 2020. I'm on my way to the gym right now. <clears throat> it, uh, I was having a conversation yesterday and I said, uh, I said for every time that it felt like I was, how can I put it? It was funny because how I said it was very secretive. Like, I'm going to tell you a secret that nobody else knows. And I said for every time I felt like I was going to fail. Some way, somehow, God came in, reconfigured the situation, and put me on a path of success. And some people might say, well, how do you know it was God? Well, because I never, ever shared my desire, my need, my fear, my want with anybody. Not a human soul do I turn to to get help. But yet, the exact thing that I need is delivered. So if you don't tell anybody what you need, then there's not another mortal living soul that you have confided in to say, hey, listen, this is my position. This is where I'm at with things. This is what I need. And if you haven't did that with another individual, then how did it get provided for? If you're an unbeliever, you say it was it was luck. Oh man, luck is really shining down on you. But as I was having this conversation, I said if you do the right thing with what you have you'll be given more. In the past three years, I've emptied out my closet five times, five times. I'm about to empty it out again. And I'm talking about even like stuff I had just bought. Like, uh, I know I went to Dillard's and I bought these really nice button up shirts and I, I sent them to the embroiderer to have my business name put on them. But because of my, my journey and, 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 and exercise and biking and running and marathons, I've, I've, I've just lost, well, not even lost weight. Honestly, I've, I haven't even lost weight. I've just become trimmer. I've taken what I had and, and formed it. But the clothes didn't fit me. I mean, I just end up coming from the store a couple days ago buying some new clothes because what I had before didn't fit me. But I've, I've emptied out my closet a couple times and, you know, I had probably about, I'd say easily a couple thousand dollars worth of sports coats that literally did not fit me. I mean, when, if I put them on, you swear they were my big, 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 big brothers. And it was hard to part with them because I liked them. I knew how much they cost. And then the church said that they were having a outreach. They said, hey, no, you know, if you got any clothes, we're going to be blessing the homeless. Well, I was like, man, I, sure. I like this coat. I'm pretty sure somebody else might like it. Somebody can fit it. So I gave it to them. Hey, man, go bless somebody else with this. So I've emptied out my closet five times, minimum. And every single time my closet is filled back up. 
every single solitary time. See, we don't want to ever get rid of everything, every, anything, because we're so scared that we won't be able to replace it with either something like it or something better, so we just don't get rid of anything, because we lack faith. We lack the belief that our needs will be provided for, so we just hold on to everything. We hoard So I would have to say in the category of doing the right thing, not doing the right thing, I would say we're not doing the right thing in terms of trust. And as I'm having this conversation, literally as I was having that conversation, it was funny because my phone went off. And it was a message. It was it was in messengers and Facebook Messenger. And this lady says, "I don't even know who this person is. I don't, I don't have a clue. I guess we're friends on Facebook." She says, "We want to buy a house. We need to get some help. Can you help us out?" And it was at the exact same moment that I was talking about having trust and faith in God that this circumstance of abundance dropped into my lap for another deal. And what I've learned is that if you do the right thing with what you're given, you'll be given more. And when you have more, especially when it comes in terms of finances, because I've never had enough money where I was, you know, how you see, you know, like emojis and whatnot of, or gifts of people swimming in, in piles of cash. Cash is dirty. It's nasty. Everybody's hands touch it funny. You know, they say, they say money filters through a, a thousand hands. It's got germs all over. It's nasty. But it, it helps you buy stuff. You know, if you want to buy a plane ticket to get to Paris, you need money. Right? It's not the money that made you happy. It was the fact that the money was able to afford you the opportunity to go to Paris. Going to Paris made you happy. But when you do the right thing with what you're giving then you're giving more of these things that give you the opportunity to do the things that you want to do. It allows you not to have to worry about it. See, that's what I'm learning. If I can remove, if I can remove one less worry from my life, one less concern from my life, then that leaves the opportunity to focus on what I really want to do in my life. See, I've, I've, I've come to the conclusion I love what I do. I love my business. I love helping people. I love the financial return on that. But it's not the end-all, be-all. It's not everything. And sometimes you have to pass through these different chapters in your life to get to a point where you say, yeah, that's not it. Yeah, that's not it. That's not it. Now, I want to be a good father. And it's really hard to be a good father when you have pressures and responsibilities, when you have mounting failures, when you have mounting failures self-imposed mounting failures. You know, those things where you said, this is what you said you would do, but you didn't do that. Meaning you have broke your own covenant. You have broken your own word with yourself. How can you face your kids when you have not even kept your word with what you said you would do? I've been there too many times and thought that I could still be a great dad even though I was out of integrity with myself. And that's not possible. You can't like anybody else if you don't like yourself. And you can't like yourself if you can't be honest with yourself. I say all that to say that when you're able to appreciate 
the level of what God gives to you, you never have to worry about what you'll, if you'll be provided for. And when you don't have to worry about what you're going to be, if you'll be provided for, then it allows you to really focus on your purpose. See, that's all you really, you want to hand off as much responsibility to other people that know what they're doing so that you can focus on what it is that you do the best. And there's no better partner that I found in life than God to provide in areas where I just couldn't get it done by myself. And I've seen money come in bigger abundances, but I've also seen bigger responsibilities. I walk around with two books. Matter of fact, they're sitting right here. I walk around with two, two books. These are not Bibles. Matter of fact, these were gifts from my mother. She happened to, which was a dope gift because these are, you know, these $25, $30 books. I think I had about four of them. One. I'm up here. This is all my expenses for Jan for 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 the year leading up to now. I think this is it. Yeah. So this is January. All the way to June. Expenses. This book not only do I write down scripture and stuff that I learn on Sunday, but it's also the book I keep notes in of tasks that I have to complete. So if there's something I need to do, I go in there and I write it out. That way, when I get ready to sit down in my office, I don't have to try to figure out what I need to do for the day. It's right there. I just start, I, I, I look at a list of things that I have to do, and I pick the one that if I did that would make everything either unnecessary or easier, and I start with that and I get laser beam focused on that one thing. But this book, With the finances, you want more money? Learn how to spend and keep what you got. I've already written in it just now. I, I had two ledgers from last night. Yeah, banks do that. There's apps that do it. But why not discipline yourself to put your hand-eye coordination to work? That way you can start writing down and seeing where your money's going. And then tally it up. What I'm saying is, is God will provide in areas that you are not necessarily as efficient in so that you can make time to be more efficient in areas that you actually have a purpose for. I don't have a purpose for money. Money has a purpose for me. But you have to start getting some of the things off of your plate that are holding you back. And it doesn't matter. I've just seen God work so many different times in my life. But the payoff did not start to come until I started respecting and trusting in his promise and his word. So I'm going to empty out my closet again. Right? I'm going to fill it back up. I'm going to give my tithes. And then he's going to fill my storehouse back up. I'm going to keep track of my money. And he's going to bless me with more. And that's exactly what he'll do for you.